I cautiously stepped through the rusted gates of the abandoned school building, my heart pounding in my chest. The air was heavy with a sense of desolation, and the once vibrant halls now echoed with silence. It was an eerie sight, with broken windows and crumbling walls, as if time had taken its toll on this forgotten place. As I entered the main hallway, a gust of wind whispered through the corridor, sending a shiver down my spine. The floor beneath my feet creaked with each step, as if protesting against the intrusion. The walls were adorned with faded posters, remnants of a time long gone. The sound of my own breathing seemed amplified in the stillness, creating an unsettling ambience. I couldn't help but feel like an intruder in this forgotten realm. As I explored further, I came across a classroom. The door swung open with a loud screech, revealing a space frozen in time. Desks lay askew, covered in a thick layer of dust. The blackboard was faintly visible, the remnants of chalk messages barely legible. The atmosphere in the room was suffocating, as if the weight of the past still lingered there. Curiosity pushed me forward, and I made my way to the second floor. The staircase groaned under my weight, as if struggling to support me. The hallway on the upper level was dimly lit by the pale light filtering through the broken windows. Shadows danced on the walls, creating eerie shapes that seemed to move with a life of their own. I entered a classroom on the second floor, and as I stepped inside, a chill ran down my spine. The room felt unusually cold, even though it was a warm summer's day. The desks were arranged in perfect symmetry, as if awaiting the return of their students. The dusty textbooks lay open, long forgotten. It was as if time had stopped, freezing this room in a perpetual state of abandonment. Feeling a sense of unease, I quickly moved to another room. The door swung open effortlessly, revealing a laboratory. Glass beakers and test tubes were scattered haphazardly on the counters, a reminder of past experiments. The skeletons of long-dead animals lay preserved in jars, their empty eye sockets staring back at me. The air was heavy with the smell of chemicals, a scent that lingered long after the last scientist had left. As I continued to explore the building, I noticed a set of stairs leading down to the basement. Hesitant, but driven by an insatiable curiosity, I descended into the darkness. The air grew colder with each step, and the only sound was the echo of my own footsteps. The basement was a labyrinth of narrow corridors, with flickering lights casting eerie shadows on the damp walls. I stumbled upon a room that seemed to be a storage space. The shelves were filled with dusty books and forgotten artifacts. The walls were adorned with old photographs, capturing moments of joy and laughter. It was as if the room held the memories of those who had once walked these halls. Feeling an overwhelming sense of dread, I turned to leave. But as I made my way back through the corridors, I realized I had lost my way. Panic began to set in as I hurriedly retraced my steps, but every hallway looked the same, leading me further into the depths of the building. As I walked, I could hear whispers in the darkness, faint voices that seemed to come from all directions. They were filled with sorrow and despair, as if the walls themselves were mourning the loss of life that once inhabited this place. The whispers grew louder, filling the air with an almost tangible presence. Suddenly, a door swung open in front of me, revealing a room bathed in an eerie red light. Hesitantly, I stepped inside, only to be confronted by a scene that would forever haunt my nightmares. The room was filled with rows of empty chairs, facing a stage. The stage itself was adorned with broken props, as if a performance had been abruptly interrupted. As I stood there, frozen in fear, the whispers grew louder, echoing in my ears. The chairs began to move, their creaking filling the room. The stage came alive, with shadowy figures dancing and twirling. It was as if the ghosts of the past were reliving their final moments, trapped forever in this forsaken place. Terrified, I turned to flee, desperate to escape the grasp of this nightmarish reality. The whispers followed me, growing louder with each step. The corridors seemed to stretch endlessly, leading me further into the depths of the building. Finally, I burst through the doors, gasping for breath. The sunlight blinded me, as if banishing the darkness that had consumed me. As I stumbled away from the abandoned school building, I couldn't help but wonder how many others had fallen victim to its malevolent grip. Haunted by the memories of that day, 
I vowed never to return to that forsaken place. The abandoned school building stood as a testament to the fragility of human existence, a reminder that even the places we call home can become twisted and dark. And as I walked away, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief, knowing that I had escaped the clutches of that haunting nightmare. As I cautiously approached the old, dilapidated school building, a shiver ran down my spine. The overgrown weeds and decaying structure set an eerie ambience, as if the place itself was whispering tales of unspeakable horrors. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for what lay ahead, and pushed open the creaking front door. The hallway stretched out before me, bathed in dim, flickering light. The once vibrant walls were now covered in peeling paint, revealing the decay that had taken hold. The air was thick with dust, and the only sound was the rustling of my own footsteps on the cracked linoleum floor. I began to explore the classrooms, each one more haunting than the last. Desks were overturned, textbooks scattered across the floor, and broken glass littered the windowsills. It was as if a chaotic force had ripped through the rooms, leaving nothing but destruction in its wake. In one of the classrooms, I discovered a chalkboard covered in faded scribbles. It seemed to be a desperate plea for help, a cry from someone who had once sought refuge within these walls. I shuddered, imagining the fear and desperation that must have filled this room. Moving deeper into the building, I stumbled upon the library. The shelves were in disarray, with books strewn across the floor. The musty smell of rotting paper filled the air, and the silence was broken only by the occasional flutter of pages as they turned in the gentle breeze. I couldn't help but wonder what had led to the abandonment of this once thriving educational institution. Had it been a financial crisis, or perhaps a devastating event that had forced its closure? The mystery surrounding the school only added to the unease that settled in the pit of my stomach. As I ascended the staircase to the upper floor, the atmosphere grew even more suffocating. The walls were adorned with faded posters and student artwork, now warped and distorted by time. The sound of my breathing echoed through the empty corridors, amplifying the feeling of isolation. Entering one of the classrooms, I noticed an old, cracked mirror hanging on the wall. Its reflective surface was clouded with age, but something compelled me to look closer. As I peered into the mirror, my reflection stared back at me with hollow eyes, as if it too had been consumed by the darkness that haunted this forsaken place. Determined to uncover the truth, I ventured into the basement. The air grew colder, and the faint hum of electricity filled the silence. The flickering light bulbs cast eerie shadows on the damp, crumbling walls, revealing glimpses of the building's dark history. In a small storage room, I found a collection of old photographs. They depicted a group of students, smiling and carefree, their innocence frozen in time. But as I examined the images closer, I noticed a sense of unease in their eyes as if they too were aware of the impending doom that awaited this school. Further exploration led me to a forgotten auditorium. The grand stage, once the centerpiece of countless performances, now stood in ruin. The seats were tattered and torn, and the air was heavy with a sense of loss and despair. It was here that I could almost hear the distant echoes of laughter and applause, now silenced by the passage of time. As I prepared to leave, a sudden noise caught my attention. It was the sound of footsteps, echoing through the empty hallways. Panic seized me, and I quickly ducked behind a broken piano, my heart pounding in my chest. The footsteps grew louder, closer. My mind raced with thoughts of who or what could be lurking in the shadows. I held my breath, praying that whatever it was would pass me by. But then, as suddenly as it had come, the sound faded away. The silence returned, as if the building had swallowed up the intruder. I cautiously emerged from my hiding spot, my curiosity piqued by the encounter. Night began to fall, and I realized I had lost track of time. The darkness outside seemed to seep into the building, intensifying the feeling of foreboding. The once faint sounds of my own footsteps now echoed ominously through the empty corridors. As I made my way towards the exit, a sudden gust of wind slammed the front door shut, trapping me inside. Panic surged through my veins and I frantically searched for another way out. But every door I tried was locked, and the windows were sealed shut. In my desperate attempts to escape, 
I stumbled upon a hidden staircase leading to the roof. With no other options, I climbed the stairs, my heart beat thundering in my ears. As I reached the top, a chilling gust of wind greeted me, carrying with it the faint whispers of those who had walked these halls before. As I stood on the rooftop, I gazed out at the desolate landscape. The moon cast an eerie glow over the abandoned school, and the silence was deafening. It was as if time had stood still, preserving the haunted remnants of a place that should have been filled with laughter and learning. With a heavy heart, I realized that the true horror of this building was not found in the presence of ghosts or legends, but in the tragic tale of its demise. The echoes of forgotten lives reverberated through the halls, a testament to the darkness that can consume even the most innocent of places. With a final, lingering glance, I turned away from the abandoned school building, its secrets forever locked within its decaying walls. As I walked away, a sense of melancholy washed over me, a reminder of the fragility of human existence and the haunting power of our own actions. The sun had long set, casting an eerie darkness over the desolate landscape as I approached the abandoned school building. Its crumbling facade stood as a haunting reminder of a time long forgotten. The air was heavy with an unsettling silence, broken only by the distant sounds of rustling leaves and my own apprehensive footsteps. As I cautiously pushed open the creaking front door, a musty odor assaulted my senses. The air inside was stagnant, as if time itself had stood still within these decaying walls. Moonlight filtered through broken windows, casting long shadows that danced across the floor, adding to the eerie atmosphere. The hallway stretched out before me, its faded wallpaper peeling away to reveal the bare bones of the building. I could almost hear the whispers of past students, their laughter and footsteps echoing through the corridor. The silence was deafening, a constant reminder of the emptiness that now enveloped this forsaken place. I ventured further into the depths of the abandoned school, my heart pounding in my chest. Each step I took seemed to reverberate through the building, amplifying the sense of my own vulnerability. The classrooms on either side were frozen in time, desks covered in layers of dust and textbooks left open as if waiting for their owners to return. As I entered one of the classrooms, a shiver ran down my spine. The walls were adorned with faded artwork and aged teaching materials. The remnants of a once vibrant learning environment now lay forgotten, overshadowed by the weight of neglect. A broken chair lay on its side, a silent testament to the chaos that had once consumed this room. Moving deeper into the building, I found myself in the abandoned library. Rows upon rows of empty shelves lined the walls, devoid of the knowledge they once held. The air was filled with the scent of decaying books, their pages weathered and yellowed with age. I couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness for the lost stories that would never be read again. A staircase led me to the upper floors, where the darkness seemed to engulf me completely. The steps groaned beneath my weight, as if protesting my intrusion into this forgotten realm. The sound echoed through the empty halls, as if awakening the spirits of the past. The upper floors were filled with a sense of desolation that was almost suffocating. Rows of lockers lined the walls, their metal doors rusted shut. Each one was a tomb, holding the memories of students long gone. It was as if the very essence of their hopes and dreams had been left behind, trapped within the confines of these abandoned corridors. I ventured into the science lab, the remnants of experiments scattered haphazardly across the countertops. Test tubes lay broken, their contents spilled and dried. The skeleton of a small animal sat on a shelf, a macabre display frozen in time. It was a stark reminder of the life that had once thrived within these walls reduced to nothing more than a forgotten relic. The gymnasium was a cavernous space, its wooden floors worn and marked with the passage of time. The sound of my own footsteps echoed through the vast emptiness, bouncing off the walls and creating an eerie symphony. The bleachers, once filled with cheering spectators, now stood as silent witnesses to a time long past. As I made my way to the basement, a sense of trepidation washed over me. The stairs leading down seemed to disappear into an abyss of darkness. With each step, the temperature dropped, sending a chill through my bones. The air was heavy, thick with the scent of dampness and decay. The basement was a labyrinth of forgotten spaces, each one more unsettling than the last. 
The walls were damp and covered in mold, the ceiling dripping with water. The flickering light of my flashlight revealed twisted corridors and hidden rooms, their purpose lost to time. In one corner, I stumbled upon a room filled with broken furniture and discarded belongings. It was as if the inhabitants had fled in haste, leaving behind a trail of forgotten memories. The walls were adorned with faded photographs, their subjects now faceless and nameless. The remnants of a life once lived lay scattered across the floor, a poignant reminder of the impermanence of human existence. As I made my way back up to the main floor, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. The weight of the abandoned school building lifted from my shoulders, replaced by a newfound appreciation for the lives that had once inhabited these halls. It was a reminder that, in the end, no matter how grand or impressive, all things eventually succumbed to the relentless march of time. Leaving the building behind, I couldn't help but cast one last glance over my shoulder. The abandoned school stood as a testament to the impermanence of human endeavors, a haunting reminder of the inevitable decay that awaits us all. And as I walked away, the echoes of the past whispered in my ears, forever etched in the walls of that forgotten place.